afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures. And it's your daily midday market minute. We have a little selling in stocks, but before I get to it, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the link below and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And if you're watching this from our website, there's also a link below to direct you to YouTube, and you can subscribe that way. We'd love you to follow us. We'd love you to help us build our following. Yes, we're seeing a little bit of weakness here, carry from last week into the equity market. The S&P is now decisively below 40.50. Broke below there, you know, early this morning. It was trying to battle on the opening bell, barely. And then the, the selling really kicked in. Um, NASDAQ and the S&P are, are testing big levels of support. We, now, everybody knows 4,000 to 4010 in the S&P and about 12,055 to 12,150 in the NASDAQ. Those are big levels of, of support. But really what we're watching is, is what's below there. And uh, that's all highlighted on the Morning Express. So go check it out. Those levels are on there from this morning. 4050 was a big one because there was a lot of options that were sitting there that expired at the end of last week. There was also a retracement. There was there was the low from post-Fed. The number of indicators all aligned there. So now that the options expiration, we get a decisive break below there. The question is, is this going to be sort of a December-like selling where we really kind of see several big days? We'll have to wait and see. What matters is today's close, 4,000. Do we decisively get below there on a closing basis? And I would imagine if so, then we go see our next levels, that rare major four-star support, that next one I've highlighted on the Morning Express. So go check it out. Um, you know, just shifting gears though, what really started driving this morning, Walmart lower, Home Depot is lower, cautioned on the economy, it's still NVIDIA that reports after the bell tomorrow, um, just sort of this, this little bit of uh, geopolitical tension that's sort of budding as well. So, you know, once the market starts to go on a risk off mood, uh, that there's, it can really find the bad news very easily. Uh, at the end of the day too, rates are higher and that's weighing on the markets. I, I highlighted on the Morning Express, watch the short end, got the two year note hitting up against 475. It actually could be a closing high in this yield here today potentially. And and then the 10-year yield closing in on 4%. So higher yields is going to, is going to tighten this market up. You had uh, flash PMIs as well. Both beat expectations. Sort of a strong report. It, that report itself did highlight um, in sort of unseasonably warm weather as a catalyst for, for better data. But at the same time, the, if the data is better, that's really what matters right now. The Fed could become more hawkish. And we're seeing the odds of a 50 basis point hike in the March meeting decisively above that 20% probability now. A lot, a lot's going to develop here this week. It's not a big full economic calendar, though. We get the minutes on Wednesday. We have another look at quarter uh, four GDP, and we got the Fed's preferred inflation indicator, the core PCE index, on Friday. Uh, but really, it's going to be what type of fresh Fed speak do we hear as the week unfolds? So stand by. Now, let's move on. Let's switch gears to crude oil. It's really sort of battling as this March contract is falling off. Uh, 75 to 76 dollars get a number of levels highlighted in there uh, same way you got a lot of resistance up there by 78 and a half to 78.80 or so so we're in this range you got to really break on either way of it i'm watching copper very closely copper held four bucks last week ripped higher by more than 10 cents here today out about 420 really exuding um you know just sort of the china reopening and some some positive economic momentum that we're seeing in the data uh as well from there but if copper rolls over, I would imagine we might see some, some weakness kind of carry into to what, what crude hasn't been able to carry down. So keep an eye, close eye on that. Um, API data is not after the bell today. It's going to be after the bell tomorrow. I, I'm really watching this, this week's EIA data. It showed lukewarm demand, big builds last week. If we see something like that again, I don't think this market can withstand that. We could be at $70 very quickly. So watch that. Though we have a number of big support levels highlighted uh, on the Morning Express. They're there. Check them out. And then uh, let's finish off here with the metals. Uh, first, though, with the dollar. The dollar index is moving higher. Uh, we're seeing the euro lower. We're seeing the yen lower and rates higher. It's not a very good environment for the metals, specifically the precious metals. Of course, I mentioned uh, copper's higher, but the precious metals, um, you're seeing gold try, you know, really couldn't hold out above 1850 very well. So got a little bit of weakness there. Silver testing some resistance at $22. If rates keep going higher and the dollar keeps going higher, it's going to weigh in the precious metals here. Though I, I think the worst of the selling is over. You never really want to catch a falling knife, but there was a little bit of a spinning bottom, spinning top sort of uh, price action on, on Friday. We kind of struggling, struggling to get the follow through here today with that dollar strength. So be cautious here if that dollar continues higher. And our team's here to help. So don't hesitate to reach out. 312-278-0500. Remember, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss. It is not suitable for all investors.